Hello, and welcome to episode 54 of the Bible Q&A with Pastor Stephen. My name is Stephen Pace, and I'm the senior pastor at Decatur Bible Church in Decatur, Michigan. On this podcast, I attempt to answer Bible questions in a clear but thorough manner. If you have a Bible-related question that you'd like me to consider for a future episode, you can email me your question to Pastor S T E V E N D B C at gmail.com. Again, if you have a Bible-related question that you'd like me to consider answering in a future episode, please feel free to email me at Pastor S T E V E N D B C at gmail.com. On this particular episode, we'll be looking at a listener-submitted question. And so before we look at the question, I encourage you to grab your Bibles and we'll get started. As I said, the question that we'll be looking at today primarily is related to John the Baptist. And a question that I received regarding what is John's baptism. So the question that was submitted to me by a listener was, Pastor, in the Gospels we see that John the Baptist gives baptism. What is the difference, what is the meaning of John's baptism? Thank you. So the question centers on, of course, obviously John the Baptist, as well as the meaning and understanding of John's baptism and it's sort of inferred in the question because as Christians uh, we receive a different baptism than John's. So on this episode we'll be looking at what is meant by the baptism of John in terms of from the Gospels and then we'll look at what are some of the differences between the baptism that John provided as opposed to the baptism that is received today. In other words, we might could say it for simplicity as Jesus' baptism. Now we could turn to several different passages uh, that record the baptism of John, where John is being described as baptizing him in the wilderness of Judea. Uh, But for this episode, we'll just center on Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. So again, you can look at this in the other gospel accounts. For example, it's in Mark chapter 1, verses 3 through 8. It's in Luke chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. Um, The gospel of John has uh, some additional information in it as well. You can see that in John chapter 1. But for our purposes, we'll be just using Matthew chapter 3, and verses 1 through 12. Now, probably are familiar with uh, John the Baptist, but let me just touch on the setting just real briefly. Uh, The Gospel of Matthew is presenting Jesus, I like to say, as the king, uh, the long-awaited king of Israel to sit on the throne of David. Uh, In the first two chapters, primarily deal with the what we would think of as birth narratives, of Jesus as well as the early days of his life for example in chapter 2 the visit of the Magi uh, his flight to Egypt as the Lord protecting the child Jesus against Herod and so forth but between chapters 2 and 3 there's of course a gap of time Uh, we don't have anything of Jesus other than a little bit of what's recorded in Luke chapter 2 and then all of a sudden the ministry of Jesus uh, is going to begin but what is the prelude to it is John the Baptist so John the Baptist is the forerunner and so it makes sense that John precedes Jesus in that sense and so in Matthew chapter 3 after a period of we might could think of it as silence between chapters 2 and 3 the youth age of Jesus The time comes and it is time because it's God's time and John the Baptist goes out into the wilderness of Judea and in Matthew chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 it says and now in those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea saying repent for the kingdom of God 
is at hand or has come near, depending on your translation. And so John begins baptizing and preaching out in Judea. And, of course, he is the forerunner. And the forerunner, as described in passages of the Old Testament like Isaiah and Malachi, they describe, of course, that a forerunner would come and the forerunner would prepare the way for Messiah. And you can see that, for example, in chapter 3 of Matthew, verse 3, uh, the reference there to the prophet Isaiah. Now, if you notice, in order to understand what and how does this relate to the baptism that John does versus what we would think of as Christian baptism or the baptism that is done in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, uh, a simple way to think of it is what's the difference between the baptism believers of Jesus have versus what is recorded here in Matthew 3, which is John's baptism. One way to understand it is, first, what was John's message? Well, if you look at Matthew chapter 3, beginning in verse 2, it tells you right off that it's dealing with repentance. So John's message, in order to understand what the purpose and meaning of baptism was in terms of for John, when John was baptizing, it starts with repentance. In fact, if you look in Acts chapter 19, verse 4, Paul speaks of the same thing in terms of John's baptism dealing with repentance. And so again, to understand John's baptism, we need to understand his message, and his message, you could say, was centered in the idea of repentance. And repentance, of course, is, you could use the expression symbolic or representative of the changing of one's mind or changing of one's direction. When we think of repentance, I think sometimes we have a misnomer and we think of it as feeling sorry. And that, of course, sorrow, godly sorrow, could do that and could produce aspects of repentance. But repentance, though, biblically is a little different than that. So let me read you two definitions of repentance. And I think that they are helpful, and they are also very succinct. The Ryrie Study Bible, referencing Matthew chapter 3 and verse 8, Ryrie writes, Repentance is a change of mind that bears fruit in a changed life. Again, the Ryrie Study Bible, referring to Matthew chapter 3, verse 8, the note there reads, Repentance is a change of mind that bears fruit in a changed life. What's Ryrie talking about? Well, if you read Matthew chapter 3, verse 8, it says, Therefore bear f fruit in keeping with repentance. Stanley Toussaint, I think, uh, explains it in, in a similar way, succinct, but notice it is a his definition here. Toussaint's, uh, from his commentary in Matthew, says, Repentance is a change of thinking that causes a change in direction. And so both Ryrie and Toussaint are essentially sedating the same thing, that repentance is a change of mind, thinking, but it reflects itself in a change of direction, and it begins to change the person. And so it's not simply, I feel sorry, I was sorry about this. Of course, it may include that, but the idea of repentance is more than just that. It changes the mind. The mind begins to see sin for the way God does, uh, as best it's able to, I suspect, at that time. But it also changes the person's direct uh, direction as well. And so it's clearly dealing with sin and uh, the subjects related to sin there. Uh, you can see in Matthew chapter 3, verse 6 there, it says, and they were being baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River as they confessed their sins. So you have a wide scope of things going on here. If I were going to summarize it, I probably would say it's something like this, that when the time came that was God's time for John to prepare the way for Messiah, he began preaching about the need for the nation of Israel to repent. They needed to change their view of themselves, sin, sin, 
they needed to prepare their hearts their minds everything needed to be changed so that it, the hearts were directed and ready to receive Messiah when he would come of course sin played an element in that change of many aspects of their lives uh, before we go any further with this subject here with John's baptism I'm going to read from 1st Thessalonians uh, chapter 1 and verse 9 Paul of course went to Thessalonica and here he's writing back to the Thessalonians so as we look at 1st Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 9 Paul writes for they themselves report about us what kind of reception we had with you Paul speaking of when they came to Thessalonica on his second missionary journey and how you turn to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead that is Jesus who rescues us from the wrath to come so in verse 9 in particular you see that Paul's just speaking of the fact that he brought the Word of God to them the gospel to them they received it and they turned to God from idols so their lives were changed and that's the idea of the idea of repentance so clearly it could include sorrow over sin sorrow over a variety of things but there is this change there is this turning that goes about so back to the question what is John's baptism so John's baptism was to prepare the people in particular their hearts so as their hearts were prepared they would be in a position directionally you would say to believe and receive Messiah which is of course would come Jesus uh, in due time so this change you could say was implied that it would put their hearts in the right direction to receive Messiah and so there was the idea of a turning a changing of the individuals at that time thus they should be prepared to receive Messiah before we go into the other aspect of the listeners question which is how and what is this different from baptism that Christians receive uh, in the name of Christ uh, we're going to have our trivia question as many of you listeners know we like to include a trivia question and this one's going to be related to the subject of John the Baptist so the trivia question is this John the Baptist is described as wearing and eating what so again for the trivia question for this episode John the Baptist is described as wearing and eating what John was of course a prophet uh, I like to think of him as the last of the Old Testament style prophets uh, very much the case uh, I believe because what you'll find is a lot of similarities with him and some of the Old Testament prophets but to answer the question in Matthew chapter 3 which is where we're at in verse 4 you see the answer to the question it said now John himself had a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist and his food was locust and wild honey so the answer there then to the trivia question is John the Baptist is described as wearing what well we see there a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt and in terms of what did he eat locust and wild honey John was as I said likened to and I think it's correct an Old Testament style prophet because in his dress and in his food as well as in his habitat and in his message John associated himself with many of the traits of the prophets I think in particular Elijah uh, you can see some references of these similarities in 2 Kings 1 8 Zechariah 13 4 and Malachi 4 5 so as we go into the other aspect of the listeners question what is the baptism of John we've already seen that it deals with we could say simply repentance it was to get the nation of Israel prepared their hearts their minds all of that 
in order to be in a position to receive Messiah, who was going to, of course, be Jesus. And it would make sense, as I mentioned earlier, for John to do this because the forerunner was to prepare the way and make the way ready. You see that in Matthew chapter 3, verse 3. There it's quoting Matthew is Isaiah, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make ready the way of the Lord, make his path straight, which is what John's one of John's purposes was. So before we finish this episode, the other side of the question that was being asked is essentially, so what's different between John's baptism and the baptism that Christians receive, meaning the followers of Jesus? So again, John's baptism, the way I would simplify it was and is, that it pointed and prepared the people for Christ coming. In other words, his first coming, Messiah's appearing to the nation of Israel. And so John was preparing, I like to say their hearts. Um, I think it was obviously more than that, but in simplicity, it was to prepare the people and to point them that Messiah was, if you will, at hand. And the time was to prepare themselves because when he came, they needed to be prepared to receive him. So the question would be, the flip side of that is, okay, so Messiah came, could I today and do I today receive John's baptism? And the answer obviously becomes no, because Messiah's already come. He's already revealed himself to the nation of Israel. Uh, the kingdom was postponed. We see later in Matthew chapters 12 and 13, for example, the nation of Israel did not receive Jesus at his first coming. Uh, that still awaits the second coming. So the question would be then, okay, so is is and how Jesus' baptism different? Well, the answer would be the first part of that, yes, it is different. When a person believes and trusts in Jesus, we know that we receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we see a lot changed in Acts chapter 2 regarding Pentecost. The Holy Spirit came just as Jesus promised the Helper. Uh, he indwells the believers today. And so there is the idea of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the, the reception, the indwelling, the receiving of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the idea there is, of course, that when a person places their trust in Jesus, they receive the permanent indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and such a wonderful gift it is. Uh, the Holy Spirit, in short, empowers us to do what we can on our own. Uh, we have the gifting that the Lord gives us. Uh, we're sealed to the day of redemption. When you trust in Jesus, if you're hearing this, you don't have to worry about that you're not going to be saved or lose the salvation. You've received the seal of the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. And so with Jesus, we receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It also identifies us with as, as members of the body of Christ. Uh, I'm going to read for, for you um, from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 13. Paul is speaking in chapter 12 of spiritual gifts. And in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, it says, For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, we were all made to drink of one spirit. Of course, that spirit there is capital because it's referring to the, the Holy Spirit. So again, a Christian, uh, when we hear this idea of baptism, uh, we have to be careful with this because what we receive when we believe in Jesus is the Holy Spirit, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And then that also identifies us as members of the body of Christ as well as everything I mentioned before. And so when we go forward with baptism as Christians, in terms of actual baptism, baptism in a pool or in a river or whatever the case may be, uh, it is a public picture of identification with Christ. So obviously it would differ from John's baptism. Of course, as I said, there's of course some similarities one could say. Because today when we 
meaning Christians are baptized, as I just said, it pictures repentance, a change in life, a change in direction, and a commitment to Christ. So, of course, I do hold the view that, uh, of course, similarities, but similarities doesn't mean same. It means just that. There's some things that are similar. And so John's baptism, along with the one today that believers receive, there are some similarities, but that doesn't mean that they're the same. Uh, today it would be impossible to undergo the same thing that John was doing because that time has already come and gone. Today Christians, when they believe in Jesus, they receive the indwelling of the Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When they actually go forward with the physical, if you will, ordinance of it, it identifies us. And of course it shows a picture of a change of life, a change in direction, and that change is a commitment to Jesus Christ. Well, I hope that that helps with the listener question on what is the baptism of John. Uh, we also looked at uh, the trivia question, but then we also saw that the differences that are between the baptism that Christians receive versus the baptism of John, uh, as well as a little bit of a similarities in a few aspects of it. Well, hopefully that helps clarify that question. And uh, thank you for taking time to listen to this particular episode. We'll be back, Lord willing, again for episode 55. Until then, God bless.